Welcome to Christchurch Cathedral in the Falkland Islands, where, like so many other places, we are restricted in what we can do by the current world pandemic. We're fortunate here that we have had so few cases of COVID-19, and best of all, of course, no lives lost. However, as we continue to mark the military memorials, which commemorate another crisis in 1982, we must remain alert and on guard. For the last few weeks, we've been presenting programmes that showcase different facets of these islands we love, and allow us to maintain the ministry and worship of this cathedral church in a very different way in a virtual world. Now, before I tell you what's on our programme today, this is actually a 100th anniversary edition. Not because it's our 100th Sunday video, but because a very special member of our far-flung congregation is about to celebrate her birthday. Now, I know this isn't very private, but no one else needs to listen. When I heard that the mother of our remarkable canon is about to reach her centenary, I began thinking about what we could do to mark the occasion. But I could only think of saying happy birthday, Grace. Until the idea grew a little bit, and we first of all produced a card. Now, the card shows a bottle of Prosecco and a couple of glasses. And I'm told, Grace, that you actually prefer a gin and tonic, but I'm afraid you'll just have to make do with Prosecco on this occasion. We'll look forward to the gin and tonic for your next centenary. Once we had produced the card, a few others became involved. So, here is the Christchurch Cathedral Coronavirus Choir, that is CCCCC for short, with a short message for you. celebrations there even during this time of social distancing. So happy birthday Grace and you might just perhaps pick up some allusions to this amazing event during the course of this service this morning. We're starting with a visit to Fortuna Group's fish farm at Moody Brook and the fish processing plant at the Canache. As we continue to look at the impact of COVID-19 on life in the Falklands, we get a sneak peek at their new trawler, currently under construction in Spain, and talk to Stuart Wallace and Tiffany May about the company's extensive blueprint for the future. After that encouraging start, we shall be visiting two gardens in Stanley, where the flowers are still amazingly in bloom in this early winter. We'll be watching a wintry sea from the comfort of our own armchairs and exploring one of the streams around Fitzroy. Oh, and not forgetting, of course, the impressive jetty at San Carlos, which featured famously in 1982. We must not forget as if all that was not enough, we celebrate Pentecost itself with prayers, hymns and readings. Stay with us as we begin to unravel the mystery. 
From celebrating a magnificent 100th birthday and thinking about mystery, we turn now to something a little younger but no less magnificent, the Falklands fishing industry, and specifically Fortuna, a leading company involved here since the creation of the fisheries in 1986. Indeed, Fortuna, with its fish farm, toothfish processing and trout smoking plant, fleet of trawlers and factory freezer vessels, and its welcome focus on sustainability and conservation is a real market leader. It's undeniable that we are in the middle of a very difficult situation here with coronavirus in the Falklands and of course worldwide. Although so far we've been spared a major problem, it's clear that there will be a severe impact on tourism and business as economies, as other economies, go into recession. The Falklands fishing industry is one of the most significant contributors to the local economy, so what happens here is likely to affect us all. And we've come to Moody Brook today to talk to Stuart Wallace and Tiffany May of Fortuna about all of this and to see how another group of key workers are coping with the effect of a world pandemic. So thank you very much Stuart and Tiffany for sparing the time to join us today. It's a real thrill to be here at the fish farm, I might say for the second time, and to be talking to some real captains of Falklands industry. Uh, is there a, a female equivalent of Captain Tiffany? I think it's still Captain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see that Fortuna is so well placed for meeting the future. So, Tiffany, perhaps if I can start by asking you what you actually do at the fish farm and what processes are involved. Okay, so I'm the assistant manager for the Falklands Fish Company, the aquaculture side. So, my role is everything from for raising a trout from egg to two kilo harvest weight and all those processes that are involved there and do you you collect the eggs as well as harvesting the fish yep actually that's what we're doing right now we're waiting for the the fish in the cage right now to become mature and then they will release their eggs for us and we'll collect them bring them back to the hatchery here for hatching in september right that sounds like a lot of work <laughs> Uh, it, it is, but it, it's exciting. Uh, me and the team here really enjoy working out at Fitzroy at our cage site and here and uh, re raising these animals. And fish farming presumably grew out of an increasing demand for fish. So what is the market like at the moment and are, are you able to delay harvesting if necessary? Uh, well, we can't delay harvesting, unfortunately, because the fish become mature as we get closer to winter, which means they're producing eggs, and that takes the coloration and a lot of the fat out of the fillet, and then you don't have as, as good a uh, quality product. So we've already harvested. Um, the market at the moment, this is normally a quiet time for us, because we mostly market to the tourist season and to the restaurants during the tourist season. So there is still a market here, it's just a little quieter than, than usual. So still reasonably comfortable? Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, still reasonably comfortable at the moment. Uh, it's, it's normally quiet for us this time of year. And do you have any specific problems to overcome with aquaculture in the Falklands? I mean, I, I know a little bit about algal blooms, which I don't think you really get here. Uh, no, like we, there was a red tide algal bloom, I think about 15 years ago, but that was pre aquaculture here. If we were to have another, another algal bloom come over from South America, that would be devastating to our, our operation. But, uh, touch wood, there hasn't been in a significant amount of time. And as I understand it, aquaculture traditionally has a very high capital and operating cost and presumably the position of the Falklands latitude wise actually justifies all of that Stuart. This is a, a long-term project um, <laughs> and, and we hope it will but there are there are a lot of particular challenges here and, and there are no facilities here we've had to uh, invest from scratch. Uh, we took over a, it was an existing uh, small project and we've um, developed it uh, to what it is today but it is still a pilot project um, and, and the costs are, are significant and the logistical challenges are significant 
uh, and we, we work on those we've inv been investing in trying to overcome them over the years and obviously we review the situation periodically well, I may say what we're looking at today is quite amazing. It, it looks as though you've been established for quite a long time. <laughs> I, I think it's a real credit to, to Tiffany and Simon and all the team that Absolutely. we've had, uh, yeah. to achieve what is, as you see, is, is quite a facility. So the, the fish farm is, is just one aspect of Fortuna's portfolio. Um, and I gather, Stuart, you're on the point of commissioning a new trawler. Yes, we are. It'll be... Uh, um, ready actually towards the end of this year. Um, uh, amazingly, the, the, the crisis with the uh, um, virus in Spain, as you know, has been terribly well, tragic and damaging. Mm. But the, the yard where the ship is being built has been uh, continuing to work at a, at a slightly slower, slower pace. But the ship will be leading edge design, uh, leading edge technology, and a, a, a very welcome uh, modernization of part of our fleet. Oh, we're very much looking forward to it arriving down here. Do you have any estimate of, of when that is likely to be? We're, we're looking at the beginning of the first season next year, so that would be in, in February next year. Um, she's going to be called the Falcon, and, and the, the investment and commitment is of the order of 24, 25 million euros. Gosh, that's quite significant. Yes, it, it took a lot of financing and negotiating over over a year or two to to be able to press the button to go and we're, we're talking about Europe uh, you're you've got a, a, a trawler being built in Spain at the moment and that brings us neatly on to the question of brexit which I know has been talked about a lot in the past um, presumably that is still a live issue uh, very much so and we don't we don't know what's going to happen even even now um, but if there is no deal, or if the deal is wrong for us, for our sector, the, the impact will be uh, quotas in our main markets uh, of between 6 and 16%. Uh, from, from memory, something that will be something like 300,000 euros per vessel. Uh, it will be extremely serious um, uh, going forward. Yes, uh, extremely serious sounds uh, quite a nice way of putting it. Um, I mean, presumably you will be looking for <coughs> some uh, reduction in licensing fees or something of that order to actually enable the industry to continue in the way that it is at the moment. It'll, it will impact us badly if it goes ahead and, and we've had, uh, as everybody has had this year, some uh, a pretty terrible time. We. Um, We'll, we had a, quite a bad time last year because, you, as, as everybody knows too, <laughs> the, the, the license fees were, were hiked and, yes. and we said at the time that that was a mistake and, and we think it, it was a mistake now. But equally the, the, the key to us, to, to our economy and to our the success, the economic viability of everything we're all, we're all doing is, is cooperation, is collaboration, mm. Is, mm. is mutual understanding and so that's an important factor two here we, we, there are challenges and uh, like many sectors and in many places in the world we have challenges but together we're stronger absolutely yeah i mean to coin to use the coronavirus phrase we're all in this together yes yeah, <laughs> yes, yes we are um so w we've been talking about europe and so on i mean where is the focus of fortuna really in terms of the international fishing scene um, I know you, you have a, a, a European subsidiary operating out of Holland. Is that where your, your main business is likely to be? Well, we have, a, we have a, in, the, in, a marketing, in the marketing area, value adding value in the market chain, in the value chain, we have a, a, a company in, in Holland and we have um, a company in Vigo in, in Spain for the distribution and sale of, of our products. So we sell in for our squid for example we, we sell all of that mostly all of that in southern europe spain italy croatia right, right. Um, so you can see the implications of that going forward yeah um but that's our main market for our our product and and sometimes we we lose sight of the fact that we are major suppliers to those markets you know we we supply from the falklands let us say of the order of fifty thousand tons of squid per annum so, and our market are those wow. countries. 
So, in fact, if, you, if you're going on holiday in the Mediterranean, you are likely to be eating Falklands squid. Yeah, it's very possible. <laughs> but if they sell you, if the ring is a big uh, squid ring, then it's probably, it's probably not our lily. You're, <laughs> you're being had. Uh, and I, I understand you're also looking east to Japan as well. We have, um, um, from, from the, the Falklands Fish Company, the processing plant, we, we sell um, some of our product, our toothfish product. We've established markets for that in Hong Kong with um, f about seven or eight of the, of the top hotels in, in Hong Kong who are regular buyers of our product. They, they like it very much. We used to produce it from uh, here from uh, the South Georgia toothfish that we, we had before the South Georgia government um, basically destroyed that part of our business. <laughs> Um, right. So now we, but we continue with uh, toothfish from CFL, Consolidated Fisheries, and we provide and sell into that market, which we've, it's just taken five years uh, and, a, and a great deal of effort to develop. And now, of course, it looks like that situation is <laughs> turning a little so bad. So we, we want uh, Hong Kong to calm down. We absolutely <laughs> want Hong Kong to calm down. <laughs> you've, you've mentioned the processing plant, which we went to have a look at um, earlier in the week, which I, th I think is, is really impressive. Can you, t can you tell us a little bit about that, how that came about? Well, it, it really um, it came from this project here when we got involved in this and decided to... Um, um, to invest in it, there are no, there were no um, suitable processing facilities available. So part of the consideration of this product was the, the knowledge that we, this, this process project would, was the knowledge that we'd need to have a processing plant. And so we um, invested in one and got a Spanish company to come and build it uh, in the winter. In the winter, it must be five years ago now, yes, I guess. And um, and they did a fantastic job. It cost about half a million pounds. Um, and we built the processing plant, um, which was designed by uh, s uh, and supervised by uh, Simon Hardcastle, who did a, a really great job. Right. And, and we have the, the small, but um, but it's a, a really good small processing plant. Mm. It does a very mm. good job. And over the years, we've we've experimented, we've learned, and we're still learning um, because, as, as everybody well, we knows, all, we all carry on learning. We all learn, <laughs> and, and we have no tradition here of fish processing, so. Mm. Um, it's, it's, we've learned a great deal. I, I mean, I, th I think it's absolutely great to see a processing plant um, because that is surely added value to what you're doing um, and is of significant benefit to the Falklands economy. Uh, well, I mean, I think that a large part of the value is the knowledge, the knowledge that it enables you to have. I mean, there isn't you know, we, we process uh, our products in different countries uh, in, in Europe. We process in, in Morocco, in Albania, in, um, for a while in Namibia um, and in Spain. We process different products, mostly squid. But to have the process happening here, even in a small, again, it's, it's really a pilot size because you, know, you go to plants that have a thousand people in it, we have 12. <laughs> um, so at the moment. At the moment, absolutely. <laughs> you need to be aspirational. <laughs> um, and, and so it is small, but We've learned a huge amount from it, and, and on the basis of it, we've been able to take our product to um, Brussels seafood shows, the biggest in the world. Uh, we've been to the German. And, I mean, shows. I've s sorry to interrupt, yeah. Stuart, but I mean, I've seen some impressive packaging as well, which is is really part of the marketing. It, uh, it really angle, is, isn't it? And all of these things are separate skills. Yeah, separate um, knowledge batches, if you like, that we have had to to gear up to learn about. And yeah, I mean, w and we ca we carry on learning uh, as as we've said. I mean, clearly this is a massive investment for Fortuna. I mean, taken as a whole, you've been talking figures a little bit earlier, um, but there's an enormous amount of doom and gloom in the world economy at the moment with furlough schemes, redundancies, and so on. Do you? What is the outlook that, as you see it, from the Falklands? Our, our product for this last season, most of it, uh, in the Fortuna Group product, uh, as with others actually, is, is actually arriving now in, in, in the market. And we, in our case, we, we um, uh, store it and then sell it to the market over particularly the summer for this product. So we will see how it goes. We are fortunate that we're, it's not fresh product, so we are able to store it. It has a shelf life. Mm. 
and we were able to, to, you know, to step back and, and see how things are going and we've been very careful as, as have others in the in the sector yeah, to, yes. to not cry wolf to, to when we start talking about how things are in the next few months so it'll be based on on evidence and so we're still hopeful that of course it will be challenging and we will see a reduction in in, in revenues that um, that we have we, we're strong we have the support of our government um, and support very welcome support very yeah, welcome yeah. support and we have um, the some of the most expert people in the world uh, whom we employ for example to sell our product um, we have a really good product our, our squid is regarded as one of the best and probably the best in, in volume uh, in terms of the volume of it and the quality in the market in the world so we have strengths to play on um, of course it's going to be a lot more difficult I mean we can all see that the, mm. the horizon is, is, is uh, a little clouded but but let's just wait for a few months before we start being too gloomy and despairing. <laughs> and the, I mean, we hear that the European tourist market is likely to be reopening at the beginning of July, say. So that's another uh, another sort of bit of optimism. Y yes, it is, and, and the the tourist market is is really very important to us because a large part of our our sales are to. Um, a small uh, to restaurants, to hotels, to to the tourist trade, all around southern Europe at at about this time of year. So any increase or return to something approaching normal normality will feed into uh, our, our sales um, immediately. So we're just coming into winter, although the sun is out at, at the moment. But the outlook, from what you're telling me, is quite sunny. Yes, sunny with cloudy patches, I think. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, Stuart, and thank you, Tiffany, for, for joining us today. I think that's been a very interesting discussion, and clearly the, the future is still quite rosy. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. After that upbeat assessment of a post-COVID-19 future for the Falklands fishing industry, it's time to turn our attention to the transformational power of Pentecost as we pray for the renewal of ourselves, our community and the world. As we've just been reminded, we are all in this together. So talking together, working together, planning together, church, government, community and business is essential not only for beating coronavirus, but for building a better future. Now, more than ever, we need renewal. Our first hymn this morning speaks of the immortal love of the Creator for his world. Written by the American poet and political activist John Greenleaf Whittier, the words reflect his Quaker belief that there is a direct relationship between us and God and that we each carry something of his light in our own lives. Although Whittier compares the love of God to the never-ebbing sea, which even the depths cannot drown. It is to the gardens of Stanley that we turn this morning for an illustration of what this means. From colour and variety, even at the beginning of winter, to hardy rock features on which we can rely for strength. Although he came from a poor farming background and had little formal education, Whittier went on to become a newspaper editor, an author, poet, and co-founder of the American Anti-Slavery Society. Many of his early hymns were concerned with injustice and the need for Christian action. But Immortal Love, Forever Full, sung for us today by our hastily improvised coronavirus choir, speaks quite simply of faith and love, which provide us with saving and transformational grace. Alone, O oh, love, no words can tell, your saving name is given. To turn aside from you is hell, to walk with you is heaven. The words are on the screen, so please do join in at home if you would like to. <laughs>
Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ, whom we worship, is our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. And we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on the cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. As we wait in silence, fill us with your Spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your Spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, starting at chapter 2, verse 1. The day of Pentecost had come, and they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky what sounded like a strong driving wind, a noise which filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them flames, like tongues of fire, distributed among them, and coming to rest on each one. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them power of utterance. Now there were staying in Jerusalem devout Jews drawn from every nation under heaven. At this sound a crowd of them gathered and were bewildered because each one heard his own language spoken. They were amazed and in astonishment exclaimed, Surely these people who are speaking are all Galileans. How is it that each of us can hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, <clears throat> of Judea and Cappadocia, of Pontus and Asia, of Phrygia and Pamphylia, of Egypt and districts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, all of us hear them telling in our own tongues the great things that God has done. They were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What can this mean? Others said contemptuously, They have been drinking. But Peter stood with the eleven, and in a loud voice addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, listen and take note of what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what the prophet Joel spoke of. In the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yes, on my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the sky above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and a pall of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before that great resplendent day, the day of the Lord, shall come. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord on that day shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God, fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God, bring strength, healing and peace. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. Holy Spirit, sent by the Father, ignite in us your holy fire. Strengthen your children with the gift of faith. Revive your church with the breath of love and renew the face of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymns by Charles Wesley, one of the greatest hymn writers of all time, hardly need much introduction. Although Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire is perhaps not one of his most famous. It is, however, particularly appropriate for Pentecost as we now sing Come Holy Ghost Our Hearts Inspire Let Us Thine Influence Prove Source of the Old Prophetic Fire Fountain of Life and Love. Charles Wesley remained an Anglican till his death in 1788, and though he helped his brother John with the Methodist movement, he strongly disapproved of the growing split between church and chapel. Altogether, he is thought to have written over 6,500 hymns, and these undoubtedly contributed to the early success of Methodism. Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire is an inspiring hymn. Please do join in the singing if you would like to as we make our way to Fitzroy. Come Holy Ghost, our hearts inspire, let us thine influence prove, source of the Fountain of light and love Come Holy Ghost For moved by Thee The prophets wrote and spoke Unlock the truth Thyself the key And seal the sacred book Expand Thy wings Let there now be light. God through Himself we then shall know if the within us shine and sound with all thy saints below the depth of love divine. Perhaps we can now echo that ancient hymn of praise. As we praise thine eternal spirit, we turn to the Father, Son and Thee, and we give thanks for the night now past. The day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your Holy Spirit grant us a right judgment in all things. And as we think about the promise of a right judgment in all things, we now listen to the word of God from both the Old Testament and the New. First to read the psalm set down for Pentecost is Chris Locke. Psalm 104 reminds us of the power of God and in particular the power of the Spirit we celebrate today. 
And the psalm is followed by Canon Kathy Biles reading the Gospel from the Gospel according to St John. A reading from Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the leatherthon that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are all filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, for ever. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hymns by Ch The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. I wonder how many times we've all heard that said, almost as though there must be some miraculous treatment available in our hospital. Or if there isn't, well, there jolly well should be. A pill maybe, or an injection that would put everything right. And as part of that medical process of transformation, turn us into perfect human beings. Of course, the phrase is generally used about all those delicious temptations that surround us in everyday life. From cream cakes to gambling, from good wines to fast cars. But it's nearly always used as an excuse. It's not our fault. It's not our fault if we've had a bit too much to drink or we broke the speed limit. It was all a bit too much and we hoped that we'd get away with it, whatever it was. And whenever I start thinking about the flesh being weak, but the spirit being willing, I can't help but remember an old advertising jingle, Naughty But Nice. It used to be applied to cream cakes, but whoever dreamt up that neat little catchphrase managed to sum up something much bigger and potentially more damaging. Naughty But Nice. That doesn't mean to say that everything nice is also naughty, but there's a pretty good chance that when we are really tempted in one form or another, 
What might have seemed nice from a distance turns out ultimately to be no such thing. Fortunately, this is not a day of temptation, but a day of revelation and transformation, which provides the perfect antidote for our human weakness and does really have the potential to make us into perfect human beings. Today of all days, the spirit is certainly willing and the flesh is given a life-giving transfusion of the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is transformational. There can be no excuses. Literally, Pentecost is nothing more than the 50th day after Easter. Pentecost to Hemera. But the real importance of the day lies in the events of that first Pentecost, when, as promised by Jesus, the Holy Spirit came down to empower the apostles. And the crowd thought they were drunk. But of course this was not liquid spirit in that sense. It was the breath of God. Another Greek word, pneuma, that is often translated as a wind. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, whether the apostles really heard a wind or saw tongues of fire darting from one to the other, from this point on, the story changes. Something truly amazing happened. And I don't just mean being able to speak foreign languages fluently without having ever learned them. No, this was a transforming point in their lives. No longer were they frightened and retiring, wondering what on earth to do next. From the depths of despair, their weakness had been turned into strength. They were confident and coherent, able to face the future and eager to get on with the difficult and dangerous work that Jesus had asked them to do. The Spirit is also transformational in the other two readings we've heard this morning, one BC and one AD, which just goes to show that if we let it rest on us here today, there is indeed a miraculous treatment available for each one of us. Then not only will our spirit be willing, but our flesh will be strong as well. Amen. Hymns by Charles Wesley, one of the greatest hymn writers of all time, hardly need much introduction. Although Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire is perhaps not one of his most famous. It is, however, particularly appropriate for Pentecost, as we now sing Come Holy Ghost Our Hearts Inspire, Let Us Thine Influence Prove, Source of the Old Prophetic Fire, Fountain of Life and Love. Charles Wesley remained an Anglican till his death in 1788, and though he helped his brother John with the Methodist movement, he strongly disapproved of the growing split between church and chapel. Altogether, he is thought to have written over 6,500 hymns, and these undoubtedly contributed to the early success of Methodism. Come Holy Ghost Our Souls Inspire is an inspiring hymn. Please do join in the singing if you would like to as we make our way to Fitzroy.
can often be weak. We need the breath of God to inflame and inspire us at Pentecost. So I invite you to join with me at home in expressing the faith of the Church in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given us this past week. The joy as this beautiful world has had a chance to breathe again. Less movement of people has given clean skies, clear waters, and the wildlife has rejuvenated. Thank you for the kindnesses that people have shown each other in this time and the opportunity for the community to be really caring and supportive of each other. We think of the Queen and we thank you for her long life. We pray for our leaders, politicians, those in government, or making difficult decisions. We pray for the church, who in difficult times is finding new ways to communicate. And we pray especially for our rector, Ian, for Cathy bringing the daily prayer diary via Facebook. We pray for the other churches in Stanley and for Morris and Debbie continuing the work of the mission, where fishermen unable to return to their home countries are being cared for and we pray for their continued work with the food bank helping those in need. We pray for those who have continued working throughout this crisis and for those who've stayed at home. Especially I pray for those who are working behind the scenes who don't met get a mention normally but nevertheless are steadfastly carrying on and I pray for those of our community who have to remain isolated to stay safe and for whom there is no end date yet to this isolation. Please help us Lord to listen to those whose voice of need is a whisper not a shout. We've been thinking about the fishing industry and we pray for the fishermen out on the seas and risking their lives in deepest peril on the sea. We pray for the fishermen who've not been able to return to their homes and their families. We pray for the industry here in the Falkland Islands and for the Marine officer and his team in the Falkland Island government. Lord, we rely so much on the work that they do for our income and for our sustenance and we just ask your blessing on all of that industry at this time. We ask for your love and blessing Lord on people having difficult times. We pray for those who have had their plans changed and are missing milestones, for youngsters missing exams or leaving school rites of passage. We pray for those of us who should be celebrating birthdays or weddings with their family and friends. 
passing a driving test or getting a new job or taking the holiday of a lifetime. Lord, some things can be put on hold, but we mourn the things which can't be. Help us to help those around us who are feeling this need and need our support. We pray for those who have been ill, anxious or lonely. We pray for those who are separated from their families or loved ones. And particularly think of those who have been bereaved recently and lost their loved ones and are sad and grieving. It's so hard, Lord, not to share a hug at the time when somebody is sad. We just pray for them and we ask that you hold them in the palm of your hand. We have been remembering the events of VE Day and Dunkirk and the sacrifices made. At this time of year, we also think of all the efforts made in 1982 by the task force when the Falklands was in the grip of fighting and uncertainty. We thank you, Lord, for all those who laid down their lives during the conflict and for the liberation of these islands. The Falklands flourishes and thrives today and never forgets the debt owed at this memorial season. And we pray for those who still bear physical and mental stars at this time. Lord, we pray for ourselves and our families we think especially today of Grace, who has lived a full and happy life and is much loved by her family. One hundred years long. What a life, Lord. We give thanks for her life today and for all the blessings you have bestowed on her. We ask for your strength and guidance, Lord, as we face the week ahead. Please help us to use all the skills and gifts that you have given us fully and to the benefit of others and help us to realise just how much we are loved by you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And let's say together in the words that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, the power and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn today was written by Harriet Orber, the daughter of a Church of England clergyman in London. Born in the late 18th century, she was a woman of her time, but with a special gift for devotional and other poetry. Her book, Spirit of the Psalms, published in 1829, was widely read, and many of her hymns were used by the world-famous preacher Charles Spurgeon at large missionary meetings. Her most well-known hymn is the wonderfully elegant Our Blessed Redeemer, ere he breathed his tender last farewell. If this had been her only work to survive, it would have been sufficient to remember Orber as a great and gifted author. With its emphasis on the Holy Spirit, a guide, a comforter bequeathed with us to dwell, it is particularly appropriate for Pentecost as we look to the future. The words are on the screen, so please do join in at home if you would like to. Find one.
With Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, blessed be, be God, God forever. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed God's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in the Falkland Islands, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you dare to walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By, by the, the Spirit's, Spirit's power, power, we will. Will you dare to embrace each other and grow together in love? We will. Will you dare to share your riches in common and minister to each other in need? We will. Will you dare to pray for each other until your hearts beat with the longings of God? We will. Will you dare to carry the light of Christ into the world's dark places? We will. We will. We hope you are enjoying being with us in our virtual cathedral. We can't yet be quite certain of when live services will restart here, although there are hopeful signs on the horizon. Meanwhile, our virtual services continue and we certainly look forward to having you with us again next Sunday. This service for Pentecost now comes to an end with a blessing after which Paul will play us out of our virtual world. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we invite that same Spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created Breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit who set the Church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Filled with the Spirit's power, go, go in, in the, the light, light and, and peace of Christ. Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.
Thank you.